What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back with the Mariners post game recap, and the title says it all today Julio, 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 Julio Rodriguez with an MVP level performance to carry the Mariners to win. I don't know if the guts on a non live stream to do my Julio call, the full Julio call. Um, but oh my gosh, what a game for Julio. This may be more of a Julio praise video than a post game recap, but we'll get into the game. Before I do, shameless plug time, 70 subscribers away from 2,000, which is my next huge goal. Um, thank you again to everybody that is sub that watches. About 40% of my videos or of these post games are watched by non-subscribers. So if you are someone that just watches it, if you can just hit the sub button for me, just helps me out a whole lot. Um, I can't thank you all enough, even if you're not sub and you're just watching. For everybody that watches these, I mean, at the beginning of the year, you can go back. I have a playlist that has all my post games in it if you want to go back and get my thoughts on games as they happened, um, you can. Beginning of the year, I was getting 30, 35 views, 20, 25. Then it kind of jumped up into the 60s, 70s. Then it was like 80 was amazing. Then it was 100 was like, wow, this video kind of blew up. I mean, th then there was some that got, we started getting into the thousands, 900s, 800s. And even now, like 300 would be low for my post game recap. So that's, that's because of you guys and gals. So thank you so much. Uh, for watching these videos. It just, from the bottom of my heart, appreciates, I appreciate that, that many people care what I have to say about the team. But, um, and again, as we get into this game, I will say, as I said yesterday, life is too short to not be happy about winning baseball games, guys, or any of your sports teams' games. Enjoy it. The Mariners win three out of four from the Royals. They come back in this one. There were some blunders. There were some, there was some headache stuff here in this one. But at the end of the day, they pull it out. They win three out of four from Kansas City. They're on a three-game winning streak. Um, so they've won what now? 11 out of 14. I think they've won 12 out of 15 games. They are playing really good ball. They're a half game back of Idle Toronto, who doesn't play today. The Mariners play one more game than Toronto does the rest of the way. So that half game is in the Mariners' control. You play even with Toronto and you win that extra game or come out ahead of that extra game, you will be in the playoffs. The Mayors are going to have the tiebreaker over the Blue Jays. Um, the tiebreaker, for people that don't know, is division record. The Mayors' division record is very good. Toronto's is very bad. Um, and truthfully, if Toronto were to end up with a better record in their division than the Mariners have in their own, it wouldn't even matter at that point because the Blue Jays would get so far ahead of the Mariners that who cares? Um, so you're essentially, in a way, tied for a playoff spot right now. I mean, you're not. You're still point five back. But a, a huge series win. Get, get credit to Kansas City. They they played hard. We can we can be like, oh, the Mariners didn't blow them out in games. Oh, they didn't do this and didn't do that. One, the Mariners were a couple outs away from sweeping this series. It would have been all close games. And the Royals weren't far out from sleep, sweeping this series either. But the Mariners did just enough. They, they showed where they're a better team. The, the Royals kind of, you got down these close games and the Royals showed why they're 39-84. The Mariners showed why they're a team kind of in contention here. Um, doesn't mean there weren't some moments where we went, Ooh, a little bit in this series, but, but they got the job done. Kansas city came to play. It's actually, it's not a bad Royals lineup. Now that pitching and bullpen is atrocious. I said, yesterday, the Royals can get some mediocre pitching. I think they can be competitive. It's hard to be 39 and 84 and just turn that around. But I mean, if they had like 12, I said, yesterday, they had 12 Marco Gonzalez is on their pitching staff. They'd probably be 52 and 71 or something like they'd be significantly better. I don't know if Marco would make that much difference, but you know what I mean? Um, I, let's get into it a little bit. I'm going to kind of go just what happened in the game here. Um, it started out at the top of the second Julio had an RBI single to make it one, nothing. I, I know one of the criticisms of this game is going to be the Mariners left a ton of people on base and early on they did, but Ty France kind of should have had a grand slam. It would have been out in 29 ballparks in baseball his hit that it was in the second inning after um, Gino was hit by a pitch after Julio singled tie came up. It would have been out in 29 to 30 ballparks. It went 417 feet and the wind brought it back just a little bit. Like, so we can be like, Oh, they should have hit more run scoring position. I mean, if Ty hits that grand slam, the Mariners have 10 runs today. I mean, and they still scored six. So I, I know there were some moments where they left some guys on base. I know there were some blunders, and I'll get into the Dylan Moore play as well. But, like, in any other moment, that ball goes over the fence for Ty. Nelson Velasquez's home run for the Royals. Like, kind of a microcosm of the series a little bit to an extent. Looked like Julio had a beat on it. The wind kind of pushed it and got it out. It is what it is. That's baseball. 
I mean, I, I'm not saying you can't like Ty's got to get over it. The mayors have to get over it and go play a game. But um, for all the knacks about not scoring with runners on, uh, they were one gust of wind going to the left away from having four more runs on the board in this game. Um, so they got up one, nothing. The Royals answered with that Velasquez home run, the bottom of the fourth Julio answered with an RBI double in the sixth. Uh, Ken zone was thrown out, um, at home, unfortunately on that play. Um, it, I didn't get to watch all this game. I was at work. So it was kind of a hit and miss what I got to see, you know, another, you know, another one there where it's like more runs left and that's frustrating. Uh, the Royals respond with three in the bottom of the six. I think there was an error on Caballero. Uh, yeah, fielding error on Caballero there. Um, you know, and, and that obviously was frustrating. They gotten out at home there. There was all kinds of stuff going on there in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the Royals took a four to two lead. And then in the top of the eighth inning, uh, let's go with the play by play here. Where are we here? It's, that's the key moments. Let's go with all. We are in the top of the eighth. So the Royals took that four two lead. We are now in the top of the eighth. So Caballero struck out. Cade Marlowe doubled. Canzone walked. Carlos Hernandez came in and replaced Taylor Horn. Carlos Hernandez is actually pretty decent. He's one of the few guys in that Royals bullpen that actually is not too bad. Like, he's not amazing, but his velocity is pretty good. And, uh, like, he's solid. He's a solid reliever. Like, he would make the Mariners roster. I, and I'm not saying that to be, like, talk down, but. Most of these Royals relievers would not crack the Mariners roster. Hernandez probably would. He, he would be someone you would keep on your roster. And Julio cranks a home run off of him to give a 5-4 lead. Um, Kirby went six. Isaiah Campbell pitched in the bottom of the seventh. Did a nice job there. Um, got a strikeout double play. Little surprised by the bullpen usage from the Mariners tonight or today. Scott went with Trent Thornton in the bottom of the eighth. Trent Thornton's credit got three flyouts. I don't know if they were hit hard or not. I, I didn't see that. A little surprised he went Thornton and Brash and not with Topa. Um, I didn't think Brash would be available today. No problem going to him. Glad he was. But I'm a little surprised we didn't see Topa in the eighth inning. This is one of those things where there's a couple things here. One, they have numbers that we don't have access to. That doesn't mean they're always right. That's not to say don't criticize them because they've got numbers we don't. Their numbers could be wrong. But maybe there's something with Thornton there that they saw it as a better matchup. Maybe, and there's also little things you never know. Like maybe Topa, I'm, I'm, this is all speculation. So don't take this as like breaking news. Jay said this, maybe Topa went up to Scott before the game and said, Hey, I, you know, I, I feel sick. I'm not feeling right today. If, if you need me, I can do it, but I'm really not, you know, so, something happened. You never know. Um, and a lot of times these things don't get brought up in the media because coaches don't want to bring that up about things. I'm not saying that's the case. Maybe there was just something they wanted with Thornton over Topa. I don't know. Um, and, and whatnot, and, and you know, we'll, we'll see what what it end up. I, I lost my train of thought there. Sorry, I looked outside and I saw a bird. A bird literally just distracted me. So that's great. Great post game here. Um, so I don't know what it is, but I'm just saying there's always things we don't know. Matt Brash pitched the ninth inning um, and went one, two, three. After the big dumper had a pinch hit home run, he pinched it for Brian O'Keefe and um, hit his 22nd home run, team leading 22nd home run for Cal Raleigh. Good to see that home run stroke coming back for the dumper. Another one I was going to point out, too, talk about the Ty France Grand Slam. Um, Brian O'Keefe had a line drive or a ground ball that was 102 off the bat that was turned into a double play. I mean, he stung that ball. You'd like to see him get in the air a little bit more for sure, um, but he hit that really hard. You know, I mean, so the Mayors did hit some hard outs here. I didn't mention it yesterday, but, you know, obviously O'Keefe's up. Tom Murphy went on the IL. Um, hopefully it's not something too long. Man, Tom Murphy would be a big blow to lose him. Um, and Brian O'Keefe is just not, you know, someone I think can hold that down for them. The Diamondbacks did release Carson Kelly yesterday. Um, Carson Kelly's been pretty bad. Um, he did have a pretty good year in 2021. A little bit more of a veteran presence. Maybe if Murphy's going to miss significant time, I'd maybe at least look into that. You know, Justin, Jerry, do some digging on that and see if that's anything. I don't know how he's been defensively, Carson Kelly. Um, but it is something I'd maybe, maybe look into if you think Murphy's injury is going to be more than just a 10, 15 day IL stint. Um, you know, and, and like, listen, if you bring in Carson Kelly, he stinks, you can bring O'Keefe back. I just think it's not it's maybe worth a shot to see if you can find something that made Carson Kelly great in 2021. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to be up in arms if they don't do it, but uh, you know, would be something to look into. So a great win for the guys. 
I, I know there was that Dylan Moore play. I think it was in the seventh. Dylan Moore singled. Um, Melendez dropped it. It looked like he caught it 100%. Dylan Moore didn't. I don't think it was that Dylan Moore didn't hustle. He thought it was caught and he stopped. Bad play by Dylan Moore. He needs to run that play out, no matter what. Worst case is you stand on first base, and if it's caught, it's caught. The ump will tell you, hey, man, you're out. Go back to the dugout. There's no reason not to run that out. And for that, Dylan Moore should be reprimanded and talked to or whatever you need to do about it. He should be. And I think Dylan Moore knows that. I also I think it was a brain fart. I think Dylan Moore thought it was caught. You know how many times guys have fly balls that are caught and they just walk back without touching first base? It happens 15 times a game. We just happen to know someone. I watched the replay knowing what happened and was like, I don't, he caught that. Like, what are we talking about here? That doesn't excuse Dylan Moore. He's got to just be standing on first base there. Big time brain fart moment. And I'm sure the coaching staff talked to him. I am sure they did. But I don't think it's something that he needs to be benched for a few days on either. Players have brain farts, guys. It, it does happen. Like, it's one thing if a guy refuses to hustle. I don't think that's what this was. It wasn't a ground ball that Dylan Moore went, oh, I'm so frustrated. I'm not even going to run that out. It was a fly ball. He thought it was caught. He kind of stopped and just, it, it was a confusion. It wasn't a throwing a hissy fit. That's what I get really angry when it's guys throwing fits about it and like, then they don't run it out. I don't think that's what happened here. Yes, should be talked to. Yes, it's not acceptable, but it's also not something. And right now with J.P. Crawford out, you, you kind of need Dylan Moore. So, uh, I mean, you bench Dylan Moore and you, you're kind of SOL. Uh, sounds like J.P. may be coming back in the next homestand. So it looks like they're going to be without J.P. in Houston and Chicago. Um, like I said, the only thing, I, I'm going to get to Julio here for a little bit. Um, like I said, I was a little surprised he went to Matt Brash in the ninth inning. I thought it'd be Topa. And Scott did say Brash is likely down for the next two games, but everybody else should be good in Houston. I, I'm going to say one thing here. And, and the notion like, oh, they, they should have gone to Toba because they didn't have Brash in Houston. Y you got to win the games that you have here. Th this was a game that was three outs away from having a W. You can't sit there and go, well, Matt might be available, but I'm going to go to a worse reliever because I need Brash in Houston. You could get blown out in all three games in Houston. Y you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And yes, the win against Houston is probably a little more valuable than Kansas City because Houston's a team directly in front of you for that second wild card in your division. So yes, the win against Houston is probably a little more valuable. But at the end of the day, they all count as one. So this win was there to be got, there to be had, maybe is a better way to say that. <laughs> and they did it. They went and they got the W. They went too early where they felt was better. Brash was ready to go. He was ready to go. Stinks not to have him the next two days in Houston, but you don't know if you're even going to be in a position where you need him the next two days. Like you, you can't, yes, you need to look ahead, but you also just can't manage based on tomorrow's game either. Now, there are some guys that just like, obviously you can't burn through everything. You've got to have a little bit of vision to the next series, but you have everybody else. Everybody else should be good to go. Uh, the mayor is also called, called up Edward Bizardo. They sent down Ryder Ryan. Um, go back and watch, if you haven't watched my video yet, where I talk about how the Mariners can get better in 2023, go watch that video. Bizarro's been putting up some pretty good numbers in AAA this year um, between the Orioles system and so far in Tacoma. And it sounds like the front office really likes his stuff. Um, kind of that one of those, one of the, the pitching factory that Jerry DePoto, Justin have kind of created down there. It seems like he could be another arm. So I'm excited to see him get into some games. I wonder if he could be a, little, a legitimate weapon. And we and I've talked about how this team should have added the bullpen arm when they lost Paul. But, like, Trent Thornton's been pretty decent. I know he's been great. I know he's going to have some home runs. Like, listen, Trent Thornton's not going to be Mariano Rivera, and neither is Edward Bizardo. But if they can be solid relievers, then instead of trading legitimate prospects to go get proven guys, like like I mentioned Kyle Finnegan, Jason Foley was out there, um, you know, Aroldis Chapman, whoever you may be that you want to get the proven reliever, if you can get good value out of Thornton and Bizardo and not have to give up major prospects, that's huge. And it looks like these could be guys that do help this team um, down the stretch here. So we'll see what Bizardo has when he gets in. Let's look at the lineup real quick. Actually, first, let's go to the pitching, the lineup. Then we're going to go praise Julio for a few minutes if you guys are cool with that. Um, George Kirby, six innings, eight hits, four runs, four runs, zero walks, two Ks. Listen, I actually thought this was kind of a tough matchup for Kirby. Um, it was either going to be Kirby, and he only threw 73 pitches. Um, it was either going to be Kirby throwing eight shutout innings at 70 pitches or just singles flared all over the place. And it was a little bit of a mix of both. 
in the beginning it was shut down and then that sixth inning they kind of kept going with the base hits the reason i say that is because of the swing rate the or the royals have guys they swing at everything and they don't strike out a ton george kirby is in the zone with everything well he does not george kirby doesn't walk people like we know that what's the at now for walks this year i don't know if this is updated to include today let me see i believe it is so george kirby on the year he has how many walks is george kirby 14 guys george kirby's walked 14 batters all year he's in the zone with everything now the, the royals offense is not great but it is pesky and when they're swinging like that they're either going to be making quick outs or they're going to be having everything drop in and we've seen a little bit of both we've seen them make some quick outs this series and we saw them also just you know nick paper cut the mariners to death a bunch of times in this series so like it, it was going to be one or the other for me for Kirby today. And it looks like he got actually a little mix of both. So I guess it technically wasn't one or the other, but I thought Kirby was fine. I, I thought he pitched well. The Royals were so pesky this series. I'm honestly throwing out all the starting pitching in this series. Like Logan wasn't great. Hancock wasn't great. I thought Castillo did a nice job to go seven. He gets credit for that. And I thought Kirby was fine today. Kirby was absolutely fine. Uh, Isaiah Campbell with a nice inning. I talked about Thornton and then Brash locked it down. Um, let's just get into the Julio praise. Well, I'll get the line first. Julio five for five, five RBIs. Gino was 0 for two uh, with two walks. Ty was 0 for five, although probably should have had the grand slam. Uh, Teo was one for five with a double. Dylan Moore was one for three. Um, technically got credit for the single on that out. O'Keefe was 0 for four. Cal with the pinch hit home run, one for one. Um, by the way, Julio OPS up to 780, Cal up to 761. Caballero was one for four with a single. Did he have a stolen base? He did not. And he, I believe he was hit by a pitch. Was he? Yeah, he was also hit by a pitch. So Caballero on base twice. That's what you need. If Cobby can reach base twice, be a pest on the base, pass them all four. Nice game for Cade Marlowe, two for three with a walk. Uh, Cade Marlowe has really made that Jared Kel Kelenic injury not very noticeable. Uh, Haggerty was 0 for 2. And then Canzone, um, two walks and two at-bats. So good to see. Nice job for Canzone. Nice game for him um, coming in there to pinch hit for Haggerty. We're going to go to fan graphs here for a second. We're going to do a little fan graph stuff, and we're going to go look at F4. So for people that don't know, F4 is fan graphs wins above replacements level, wins above replacement level. B war is baseball references. I, I know with pitching, the difference is like baseball reference is just results based, whereas fan graphs looks at FIP and XFIP for war. I'm going to be totally honest, not the guy to go for for all the differences between these, but. Um, we're still going to look at them and, and see where it's at because I got some news for you guys. Julio, I, I almost want to issue an apology to Julio um, this season because I've been kind of critical. And, and some of it deserved. Julio has had some frustrating at-bats this year. Um, he has had some tough times in late games with at-bats. So some of it is has been earned. When Julio struggles... He's not the most patient hitter in the world, so he's going to be making a lot of quick outs, and it has been frustrating at times. So it's not to say that Julio hasn't had moments where we go, oh, Julio, Julio, but let's look at the leaderboard here for war in baseball. Um, this is all of MLB, and I don't know if this is upgraded through today. I think this is upgraded through yesterday, so it's even going to get better. Julio Rodriguez is 16th. This is going. This is not even including today. Julio Rodriguez is 16th in baseball and F4. All of baseball, not, not including pitches, for, excuse me, for position players, position player F4. 16th in baseball. I, I mean, he's one war behind Marcus Simeon, who is second in the AL in F4. He ranks eighth in the American League in F4. I mean, it's not, now he's not going to lead the American League in F4 because Shohei Otani is going to do that and, Otani's a freak in nature, so I almost don't even count Otani, to be perfectly honest. But, I mean, the names above him, and this is an all-baseball. Ronald Acuna, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, Marcus Simeon, Luis Robert, Matt Olson, Bobby Witt. We got a fine taste of Bobby Witt. Wander Franco, in the words of uh, um, Clemenza from Godfather, we talk about Paul, he won't be seen Wander no more, I don't think, this year. Uh, Francisco Lindor, Hassan Kim, Adolis Garcia. Kyle Tucker, Corbin Carroll, who's been talked about as an NL MVP, Jose Ramirez. And a lot of these guys are like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 above him. Ramirez, Carroll are 0.1 above him. Tucker's 0 0.2. 
Garcia's point four. That's coming into today. There's a good chance Julio has passed those guys just with his game today. Like Julio has been absolutely amazing. Now, a lot of this is defensive based. Julio is getting a, um, his offensive uh, values 13.7, defense is 7.7. Um, that's a big boost from just from just defense. So, yes, we'd like to see the offense and start to take off. His offense has been good. But we'd like to see it take off a little bit more because eventually as he gets older, speed defense will start to decline a little bit. But defense also does count. Like, he doesn't just get to be like, oh, that's just defense. Yeah, part of what makes Julio a superstar is his defensive value. Like, that's part of it. And, and I know I'm going off here. Probably you guys probably done listening to me talk about it. But Julio's having a really, really good season, guys. I mean, again, he's eighth in the American. And this is going into today where he just went five for five with three singles, a double, and a home run. That number's going up. Julio is ridiculously good. And I, I, I need to remind myself of that sometimes because I've been critical. That doesn't mean you can't be critical. That doesn't mean that there hasn't been some moments where we've gone, oh, Julio, Julio, Julio. But take a step back and realize this 22-year-old like could end the year just behind Shohei Otani in F4 for the American League. We'll see if that happens, but there's a good chance he's going to finish top five for position players in F4 in the American League. He's really good. He is really, really good. He deserves the praise. He deserves the accolades. Julio is a superstar. Absolutely is. And man, has he carried the team the last few weeks, maybe even month or so. He has been absolutely on fire. So good to see that. Um yeah, and that's not all I've got here. Great win for the Mariners. Great series win. Sorry, a little off on this post-game recap. Kind of went all over the place a little bit. So thank you for sticking with me. I'm assuming if you're at this point, you're probably already subbed up. But if you're not, hit that sub button, hit the like button. I will be live tomorrow with Mike and Rooftop for game one of the Astros series. Going to be a tough series um, because you've got Miller, Gilbert, and Hancock. So you don't have Kirby or Castillo in this series. You do have Logan, thankfully. So it's going to be a tough one. It is going to be a challenge here for the Mariners. Um, it's why it was really important to lock this one down tonight. So hopefully they can find a way. I mean, you can't split a three-game series, but hopefully they can find a way to get two there. I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough going against Houston. But um, good thing they finished this one off. And then if you know you do have the White Sox after Houston, so we'll see what happens there. Um going into finishing up this road trip. So great win for the Mariners. Have a great rest of your Thursday afternoon, everybody. Enjoy it. Almost weekend time, so get ready for the weekend, everybody. Thank you again for watching, and as always, go Mariners. Peace.